Thank you very much for completing uh, job preps, how to prepare for your next job regarding the resume, who to send it to, how to find out about what roles you'll be best suited for, and of course, getting the right cover, covering letter done. Um, I wanted to give you some words of, uh, I suppose, advice and experience from over 15 years in the recruitment business. I said at the beginning of this uh, training course that I was qualified to do this because I had been in recruitment for over 15 years, I'd interviewed more than 8,000 people, and I'd read more than a quarter of a million resumes. So if you think about that, from a practical, obvious point of view, I'm not in the recruitment industry, I'm in the rejection industry. I've had to say thank you, but no thank you, to about 242,000 people that haven't made it to an interview stage for a variety of reasons. But I tell you what, that's a lot of rejection. Now, as you might have noticed, this chapter is called Toughen Up Buttercup. It's competitive out there. When people are applying for jobs, when people are looking for the best talent in the market, the game is on. It's a competitive game. So please, don't expect to just apply for three jobs and suddenly have three offers on the table. It can happen, but it's really, really rare. What is going to happen is that people are going to put ads up that you're going to apply to. And this is like inviting 100 people to a party at your house, and when they get there, you only let five of them in. And the other 95 kind of stand outside and they feel rejected. So, toughen up. The other thing you have to take into consideration is that while I work in the professional recruitment industry, remember only 10% of roles are actually acquired through recruiters. So 90% of people trying to do a recruitment process probably aren't well versed in that. That means you have to be patient, you have to have a certain amount of consideration for what they're trying to achieve. When they do hire people, and this is another interesting thing that we've found through all of our years of doing this, that they may not always hire the best qualified person, or they may not hire the cheapest person, but they usually hire the person that they like, the person that they can assimilate to. So you might turn around and say, I've got the best qualifications to do this, I've worked for a competitor, I know the industry market backwards, and it just may be that you didn't click. Don't feel bad about that. You're not gonna get on with everyone. Toughen up, move on to the next one. Take into account as well that when you are applying for roles, that ideally the employer will want you to start and be able to do the job straight away. So you walk in and off you go, no problems. What that means is that there's no training. They don't have to invest in training. Sure, they're gonna induct you, they're gonna welcome you, they're going to show you around, all kinds of things that you, know, you would expect going into any environment that they would do. But training, remember, 90% of employers in Australia are small business and a lot of them don't have the funding to actually do that training. So they wanna get someone who can start straight away. Remember the cover letter, remember the common ground that's gonna help you in your applications. The other thing that I'd ask you to take into account at this time is that we've heard the phrase, climb the corporate ladder. Well, just remember, you can climb the corporate ladder both up and down. Sometimes you'll get to a point where you rise to a certain position and you don't wanna do that position anymore because of the hours, because of the pressure, because of the time, um, and you wanna climb down the, the corporate ladder. You can explain that to employers and they will understand that. They might be a bit threat threatened by you if you are a little bit more senior, but they'll understand that. At the same time, at the opposite end of the scale, you may never have had a job before, so you want to start climbing, which means you've got to get your foot in the door. And that may mean that you don't start off doing the job that you necessarily wanted to. So, this can be a tough road. The standard time it takes a person who is unemployed to start in a new job is usually eight to 12 weeks. So if you don't have a position in the first two weeks, don't panic. My advice, enjoy the time off. Be productive doing something else because you're gonna work for the rest of your life. Good luck in your search.